Hello, this is Tom from Slow Miniatures, and this is my step-by-step -step guide on how to build the Necrons from the Warhammer 40,000 Indomitus box set. We'll be building them in the style of overgrown Necrons, where the concept is that during their slumber they have been reclaimed by nature and grown over by vegetation. The Necrons of this world have reawakened and reanimated, dragging the vegetation along with them. The paint scheme is quite simple and can be easily done with a brush or an airbrush. I'll be using both. This guide will work perfectly for batch painting. I think you could easily build and paint the entire Necron half in two evenings. Wobbly, wobbly. These finished models have uh, rust effects on them, but in this guide I won't be doing that. That's just an additional uh, thing you can do if you like. Little dude's pretty cool. I'll also be teaching you how to do the glowing effect. It's really simple. You also need to make sure that you don't do the same on each model, so they all look different. Here's an example, they've all got slightly different uh, amounts of uh, vegetation on them. Don't be scared to throw in some random sticks covered in floss. Firstly, you'll need to obtain some Necrons. The Necron half is of Indomitus is still available on eBay for a reasonable price. I managed to get uh, the box in the second wave of orders, so I'm lucky. For this guide, I will be creating the reanimator. Firstly, remove the model from the sprue using the guide provided to find the correct parts. Once off the sprue, carefully use a knife to remove any mould lines or tabs that are left over from the sprue.
One place in particular to keep an eye out for is the globes. They have a line going through the middle of them, which will be very obvious if you dry brush them. After the line is removed, I try and do a dry fit of the model, see if the models fit together. These easy build kits have these tabs, which um, seem to get in the way, so I just remove them. and snug. Use plastic glue, obviously. If you use uh, super glue, they uh, won't bond properly and come apart. The Indomitus uh, guide has a really cool graph to show how big a base is. I think I'll be using this in future. With the um, sky ropes, I recommend not sticking the models down so you can do the basing properly. All the other models should be fine just sticking them onto the bases. Once the models are all stuck down, I'll start the basing. Here I have some cork board, which is sold in lots of places and adds interest to your bases. Got some pieces of wood, which if I can manage to pick up, <laughs> which I add interest to the base as well. Got some very fine sand, uh, which you can put onto the metal, uh, metal parts or the base itself. And also um, this basing kit I got from uh, Luke's APS Geek Gaming, um, which is very good. So cover the base with slightly watered down PVA. Don't have to be too neat because it's uh, going to be covered in vegetation and stuff, but a thin coat. Uh, when basing I try and get a mixture of uh, light gravel and some thick gravel as well just to add interest to it and shake off any excess. Double dip if you need to. With the fine sand, um, if you don't have flock, you could use this to mimic uh, moss. So you put it on the metallic, or you can paint it later uh, with uh, orange paint and brown wash to make it look like corroded metal. So just a bit of water damp PVA and sprinkle on the sand.
There's an optional extra, I've got this Martian Iron Earth, which is a crackle paint. And you can use this to um, put on the bases, just make them look a bit more interesting. You can also put it onto the um, metallics to um, make it look like cracked metal. Again, which you could paint um, or dry brush orange and um, wash it with brown ink. If you put it on uh, very thick, uh, the cracks will be um, larger, and if you put it on thinner, they'll be a lot smaller and uh, more likely to flake off. So you want to put on a reasonable amount. So after about an hour, this is what it would look like. It's all cracked and flaky. It worked well on the uh, reanimator, but on the um, scarab base, um, it I put it on very thick and it did not dry properly. I think you'd have to leave it another hour or so and put um, some thin layers on the scarab shells as well. So prime your model black with spray paint or an airbrush, or if you want to, a brush. So there's a base coat and you see all the cracks now. And then I have uh, this uh, Vallejo metal colour, or you could use lead belcher in a can. So when painting the metallics, I try and do it as a zenithal highlight, so from the top and leave uh, dark shadows below. Shows all the um, cracks quite well now with the crackle paint. I use a uh, corn red to paint all the cables on the model. Black Templar for all the coils, normal just to wash it after the spray. Vallejo uh, orange fluorescent is for the glow effects, along with um, game ink yellow. Use white to base the glow effects. And then Agrax Earthshade or any other washes you want for the metallic. And this is a homemade wash, it's just made out of brown and black ink. So the normal wash is just to get into the recesses, you would don't want this on uh, heavy, so wick away any extra. It's 
good at showing all the um, crackle paint in there now. Next is uh, Black Templar. See, I've painted all the cables here and I'm just uh, going over the coils of this with just one coat of it. Next is the um, brown and black ink wash, which is really easy to make. It's just going over all the armor plates and legs and everything really. Give it a, like a aged, dirty look. You don't have to make your own wash, you could just use um, a mixture of like sepia and brown or um, black and brown. in the base here with red. I think I'd later change that to yellow because there's too much red on the model. So base the um, sort of ground texture all brown. And all the um, sort of corrosive bits which are fun to paint as moss. Next we're on to the white which I've watered down so it, uh, it's quite thin. It goes up against the um, edges of the uh, globes quite well. I think you basically need to do about three or four coats of this. It needs to be very smooth. Some very blurry uh, footage here. Enjoy. Don't forget this little fella. These big globes you don't really need to be super um, tidy, just try and not get the um, sort of clasps holding it in place. And because I'll be using the airbrush, there's going to be some overspray. Um, which is actually quite good because it makes it look like it's glowing around the edges and stuff as well. Don't worry if it, the white sort of runs into the recesses like in this because we can just um, fill it in with like a black ink after. So now onto the glow effects. This is the fluo paint. It absolutely reeks. Don't know why, but it smells. Let's so mix it up. I'm going to be spraying this some thin layers into the white and as I said before you can do this easily with a, a brush it just um, just takes a bit longer you want it thin as well some excellent out of uh, focus shots again enjoy this is the uh, orange glow that we're you're getting at the end, which looks pretty badass. So next, um, do a little coat of white, followed up by the yellow, which is like a glaze. So I'm, again, I'm using the airbrush, but you can do this with um, uh, just watered down paint uh, on a paintbrush. It's, it's very easy. But it has to be thin. Let's miss the eye there. Good shot, Tom. And everything's out of uh, focus. Oh, there we go. Right into focus. So you see the overspray here is actually quite good because it's going around the um, coil. Which will, which will make it look like it's glowing. You obviously still want some orange showing, so don't go overboard with the white.
So now to the yellow. Um, you're basically just trying to aim it at the white spots. As you can see, it's like instant glow effect. It's amazing. Mesmerizing. Oh, yeah. See all the um, overspray gone around the coil, makes it look like it's yeah, glowing. Very good. Managed to hit his face this time. Then I build the model, right, I all the glow effects I've done that, I think I've got my thumbprint in the middle of one of those, you might be able to spot there, but that's easily fixed with a bit of white and then more yellow. So now onto the fun bit which is the um, basin, so I've got this um, moss, some flog, some grass and a secret ingredient, dried tea. So the tree canopy thing I bought for like five quid, I think, on eBay from Geek Gaming, uh, which Luke's APS uh, channel, it's his business. It's just moss, basically, but it's um, awesome. It's like basically little ferns and um, you can rub all the stuff off the back and use it as a flock. Uh, some grass tufts, and then this is just some bright green flock I've had for about 20 years. And this is uh, some rose tea trying to use on this occasion this is just plain tea it's just dry it and use it on the basis it's free these are the uh, games workshop um plants they're strange they're like flexible but yeah blobbed bracken so in the tea mix i've put in a bit of the um back of the moss which is really good for basing Anything you get on the desk, you can just scrape up into the um, pot at the end and then use it on the basing. I'm trying to pull off um, strands of uh, moss into clumps like this to stick on, obviously, on the bigger models. And when you're doing the base, just do it in patches. You don't want to put glue all over it because it, it may dry um, before you've got around to putting all the bits on. So it's a bit of watered down PVA. Try and do like a quarter at a time. So this is the um, tea mix and uh, moss mix. Sprinkle it on. Try and get the fine bits. And then tap off any excess. me measuring off camera where to put this uh, moss. That looks good. So the moss I stick on with super glue it just seems to hold it better. That's it any sort of sticking out at an angle you can always put a bit of glue sort of further underneath and then sort of push it in a little bit and straighten it out and I cover all the um, legs and stuff with a bit of PVA do the same as you did on the base don't want to go overboard with this just think where would the sort of joints move and sort of give there shouldn't really be any growth around those fallen off so I put the green flock on after because it's um, obviously quite a strong colour so we fill in all the tiny little gaps of glue that are left I 
I think this is from Jarvis Scenics. I, I, I don't know if they still make it. As I said, I bought it about 20 years ago. So do the rest of the base, all the legs and stuff. Try and cover the bits on the bottom as well, because they'd have been grown over. Obviously try and use um, reference photos like pictures of woods and forests and stuff for inspiration. I've got some grass into the um, uh, glow effects there, but that'll come out when uh, it's dried properly. You just blow them out with your airbrush or something. So now I'm sticking on these uh, barbed bracken. just painted them with uh, Volupus pink contrast. Make them stand out a bit. And again, don't go over the top of these. Put one on the top and then I've put one on the bottom and fixed them with super glue. And then I've put some grass tufts in random places. Uh, yeah, I also realised at this point that I've covered all the crackle paint, but I didn't intend to put this much vegetation on until after I've built it, so I think the vegetation looks cooler than the crackle paint, so no loss. And I said any uh, crackle parts you've done, you can uh, obviously paint them up with a, like a orange, like a rusty colour, if, if you want in your necron to look like that. So this is the other option, if you don't have flock you can paint this um, sand that we've put on with mute green. Don't completely cover it because you want some of the brown to show. So you like stipple it on. Let that dry and this is an oil wash I'm using to um, fill in the recess of the eye just uh, to fix our mistake from earlier. Don't have to do this, it's just... Capillary action. And then on the um, moss test here, yeah, you just put in some Acrax Earthshade and so it's dry, it'll take the edge off the bright green. You see it looks very similar, but obviously a different shade of green. And that's it. So that's uh, the model done. So you could easy, easily do this uh, to batch paint an entire army. Let me know what you think. If you like it, subscribe.